Hey, I'm Jay. Uh, this video is going to be talking about ZBrush's user interface. The user interface in ZBrush gets uh, a pretty bad rap. I mean, we all know ZBrush has a learning curve. Really what's confusing is where files go and if you change things, how to keep it changed. And, and if you want to move to another location and copy your setup or download someone else's setup, it can be a little bit confusing. And so that's what we're going to try to clear up. But first we're gonna talk about how to customize. I think customizing ZBrush's UI and its colors and making hotkeys is really good. So we're gonna go over how to do that and then we're gonna go over how to store that stuff so that if you wanna to move to another computer or download someone else's or share yours, you know, how you can duplicate your setup that you like at another location, okay? Okay, now so here's how ZBrush starts up. Ew. This should look default to everyone. And this is fine, I used it like this for years and years and years. So after a while you memorize where menus are, but this sounds silly to say, but if you put something easier to access, you're more likely to use it. It's, it's so dumb, but like hunting down a couple menus might be the difference between you doing something making your life easier. Like we're all stubborn like that. Uh, so this is how you customize it. So you just go to preferences and then you open config here and then you click enable customize. You see it kind of moves a little bit um, and then when you're, when you're done customizing it'll pop back. But here's pretty much the gist. Anything that you can find uh, in these menus you can put. So uh, for instance by holding control and alt or option um, you can move these buttons. I can put that right there. De deleting them or removing them from the UI is you just drag them to the middle. So you can see like I can start just moving things around. Um, the way you get brushes in your UI is so we can we can drag out an object too. This doesn't stay in the UI. I mean this doesn't get saved. But this might open up a couple more options that you wouldn't normally see. If this isn't you don't need to do this but it makes it a little bit easier to, to demonstrate. So if we want to add brushes, then we can dock this brush thing over here. And anything that we see right here, uh, by holding those two buttons, we can we can move and drop them. Okay. And if you don't see a brush here, you could just select it, and it'll come up, and then that's what you drag over. Uh, so you can just keep dragging all day, and then add all kinds of stuff. Uh, you can add, um, you know, just as a quick example. We can put smooth and then optimize underneath that. Um, we can um, we can add brushes over here. Now I've got brushes down here on the bottom. And then you can just take your time, you know, and make it how you want. Put some put some thought into it. And the other thing too is you saw how easy it was to just click enable and then you can edit it as things come up. Uh, then we'll go over saving it real quick. Now, once you like this, then you'd go to your preferences and you'd save the UI. This saves this saves the file, okay, the CFG file. So in ZBrush's folder, Z startup, interface layouts, CFGs. Though that if you put that there, then you can cycle through them right here. So now I'm cycling through colors, and you see I loaded up mine right here. The way you change the colors is in preferences again. You click I colors. And here you go, you have all of these colors. And the way you change it is you can, you click and hold and drag around. And it's like an eyedropper in Photoshop. And then that's how you start making these colors. And then you just spend your time changing, you can change the color of everything. Drop shadows, you can take off drop shadows. I mean, you can get crazy if you want. Um, and then you save the UI colors and you save that as a file. Z startup, you can put it in user interface colors right here. And then you can cycle them here user interface colors. That's what I'm doing here is cycling. I mean it's pretty easy and the more time you spend with it the more time uh, you can make it yours. Uh, now when it comes to hotkeys, hotkeys is super easy too. Uh, I wish every program did this. So the way you do hotkeys is let's first load up um, or we'll cycle all the way through and we'll get my stuff back. Ah. Better. The way you make custom hotkeys in ZBrush is you hold down uh, on a Mac it's command and alt and you click anything you want 
anything you want to be hotkeyed. So a brush, material, an action, like dividing, saving. You hold Control, uh, Command, and Alt, and you click it. At the top here, it says, so what we're going to do is right now I've got um, one is move brush. So we'll make FormSoft, this brush down here, we'll make that one. So Command, Alt. At the top, you, hear, you see it says, press any key combination. So I press one. It says that's already assigned to something, and I'm like, that's cool. So I click OK. And now one is form soft. Now, if I want to go back to move, I click it again. I press one. OK. So now one is moved again. So that's it. That's pretty cool, right? And then to save these, um, to save the hotkeys, you'll go to preferences, hotkeys. Uh, and then you just click store. That'll that'll what's that what that's doing is saving this. It's just a text file. You can open it and you can paste. You can make your own hotkeys in text. So that makes it super easy to share too. By the way, I mean you know there's probably blogs out there. You just copy and paste the text. It's literally a text file. That text file is uh, probably in startup. Yeah. So it's the startup hotkeys dot text. Now if I were to save and overwrite that, that's the same thing as clicking store. So that's it. That file is your hotkeys, okay? And we've already we've already saved off the files for the color and the interface, like where everything is. Then we have hotkeys, right? Now, this is important because if I were to close ZBrush, the hotkeys would be saved because that's just the text file. But the colors and the interface wouldn't be wouldn't be set when I reopen. To do that, we have to save the configuration file. The configuration file like takes a snapshot of how your everything's set up. It doesn't it doesn't uh, take a snapshot of what is in the program though. So it's not like we're gonna open it and then there's gonna be a red cylinder. Okay, so don't worry about that. You do that by going to preferences again, config, store config. You can also just hit Control Shift I, and that's it. If you're interested in my settings, uh, I put a link down there in the description to a file download, and we'll go over that in a sec. So if you're if you are interested in my setup, I can briefly go over why I put things where. Um, I use some things pretty frequently. Uh, the, I kind of um, I kept this stuff down here, and that's really just for presentation for the video. So that way you can kind of see the brushes that I'm using. Uh, that's not really the easiest place to to pick them in the lower left, but it's fine. Um, especially if you hotkey your brushes, then, you know, I, I hotkeyed uh, my main four brushes and that's it. I don't mind hunting for things I don't use like all the time. That's why that's why making hotkeys can be a huge time saver. If you're switching between a few brushes constantly, that adds up. Just a couple seconds will add up to hours over time, right? So also down here, I put some, I put some things, I drag some things out that I, use frequently enough that I didn't want to hunt anymore. Um, for instance, this lazy mouse relative stuff, like if, you know, the since the standard brush and things like that sometimes default with it on, I like to see it there so I can turn that off real quick. And I also put back face mask on here. Um, that's in the brush settings. That that masks the back side of stuff so that when you're sculpting something, you know, you don't turn the model on and go, oh no, I've been sculpting the back the whole time. Uh, I also got the RGB stuff here and uh, next to the color I put fill object and stuff because I like to color things with value pretty quickly to see how that works. Up at the top left here, I don't really use this um, all that often, but when I do, I really like to have it handy that if you click custom one uh, or custom two, it's a way of taking a snapshot and like uh, locking the camera so you can go back. It's really good for checking reference. You can then save the view file and then you can load that view file if you want to. And then we have Dynamesh, Z Remesher, and Divide. I kind of put it in the order that I that I use it. I put the little settings here that I like to have. And that's pretty much it. And then over here are like my favorite materials that I like to switch between. Um, on the right side, I have stuff that I select quite often that I don't want to um, have to dig around in. Like, and I, and I always click this too, to not warn me anymore. Cause I like to select, like I want to be able to go to a different clip brush, different ways to do masks. Uh, and I also have solo here and Y, which I like to sculpt on Y. That's why I put it over here. X, Y, Z is over here. On the left here are settings that I don't use that much, but I don't 
I don't want to have to dig for them. I like having them here that I can touch if I need it. Once in a while I need these things. But that's about it. So if you do download the file, we'll go over how to install that now. So you'll get this folder here. I tried to make it easy by copying the directory that it needs to go in. I'll show you what I mean. So if you open your ZBrush, uh, you'll see here I have two folders, ZData. So we go, oh, ZData, here we go. Z data and let me see here materials startup here's some four materials uh, I these are from a couple of the artists which I credited in the link you'll see a link to their stuff and uh, go check them out but these are some materials that I have in my UI and if you don't have those materials it's not gonna show up so you also get a couple materials here that I really like so well you can move these over to materials startup and here's all your materials you just drag those in there Boop. and then the other folder is Z startup so we go okay Z startup let's thing here Z startup okay Z startup oh hotkeys okay hotkeys copy that over replace it user interface colors drag that in there replace that and then the layout and then you put the layout in there. Then what you do is once you have those in those right folders, you open up ZBrush and you can either cycle through them right here or just load them. So then once you load it up and you got everything the way that you want it, then you hit Control Shift I, that stores your configuration file. And now the next time you open ZBrush, it'll be right where you left it. So that's it. As some of you may know, I was in a friendly race to 5,000 subscribers with my friend Matt game of YouTube and um, now he has one and I have to live with that and that's okay and also shout out to all my new subscribers thank you guys for subscribing uh, thank you to Mark Brunette who probably sent a bunch of you guys over here I hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, more videos to come my next video is probably gonna be a time-lapse of doing art like a whole project in a video because it's been a while I've, that's my I feel like that's the main thing to do but since I've been making videos, I get a lot of questions and I really, it's important to me to help out people that are interested in digital sculpting, making art and ZBrush in particular. I know that it can be a challenging program. Um, and I know that it can be a pain looking stuff up. Uh, my goal is to make it easier to get up and running quicker and to just encourage people to follow their interests. If you think digital sculpting is cool, if you think, uh, ZBrush seems fun. It is, and you should you should sculpt in ZBrush. And I want to help make that easier. So, some of these videos lately have been kind of educational, and I'm gonna get back to doing art too. Uh, so the next video is probably gonna be a time lapse, and then I'll need to do an episode or two of uh, the making a game character series, and then I'll go back to making a video that um, addresses hopefully some more concerns that people have. This was a question that I got. Hey, how do you customize ZBrush? How can I get one like yours? So hopefully this has helped some people. And if you have more questions, shoot them my way. And if I think that they're worthy of a video, I'll make it. And there you go. Thanks again all for watching. Like the video if you liked it. If you haven't subscribed, get subscribed. And until the next time, peace.